Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk Global Edition. Uh, thanks to the Insurance Elephant. Uh, today I have with me Joe Macheria, co-founder and CEO at Moti Shore in Kenya. Uh, Joel, uh, thank you for being with me today. How's it going? Thanks, Tony. Um, I'm pretty good. I'm super excited about you know, what the future looks like for insurance in Africa. And um, essentially from us as Moti Shore, we are essentially a, an insure tech that is focused on last mile distribution of micro insurance products within the mobility space. Okay, Happy to be here. Last mile distribution insurance of micro products, insurance products. Okay. Yep. okay 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 uh, so i have been to africa i've been okay. to Mo morocco in the north and yep. i've i've been to south africa in the very south i have not been to kenya uh, my, my girlfriend visited kenya before she met me okay. uh, and she loved it absolutely loved it uh so at some point we'll probably go back because i want to do a safari in in in, in kenya um, okay, but I'm thoroughly unfamiliar with what what the insurance market in Kenya looks like, what the insure tech market looks looks like in Kenya. So so tell me, okay, so 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 Monty Shore, uh, last mile distribution of insurance products for mobility. Tell me more, like 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 bring it down to 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 like, so uh, to the level of like a fifth grader. Uh, help me understand what you guys are doing. Okay, cool. Um, so. I'll, I'll start off with a story. Um, so essentially back in 2018, I I was running a different company, uh, a small tea guy that was essentially focused on trying to democratize the service and repair industry of vehicles. And we built out a telematic solutions out of that using a tracking device. But then it didn't, it didn't pick up in the marketplace. So we sought out our customers to understand why that was. And then that's when, you know, we started getting into the insurance side of things where uh, insurance in Africa is very, very different from what insurance should be uh, in the sense of most people only care about, you know, compliance when it comes to regulations, right? So a guy will get an insurance product for his car so that the police don't stop him, right, on the road. So that's why they get not really as a safety net or something that could you know, really come into play when it comes to financial resilience or anything of the sort. So when we just, when, when we did our own, uh, you know, surveys, research, and try to understand the customer a bit better, it's when we realized the disconnect between the products that existed vis-a-vis -vis what the customer wanted to see, right? So um, so we, we that was intriguing for me, and we set out to understand the customer a bit better and did a couple of focus groups. And that's when we learned that, you know, uh, for most of the products within Africa, they're basically built backwards, right? So they start in a boardroom with the carriers, such as yourself. And then, you know, it's pushed to the industry. And then the industry doesn't pick it up. And then the insurers keeps wondering where the penetration is only at, you know, less than 3% within less, the whole okay. country. So, so in the whole country, less than 3% of drivers have insurance beyond what is legally required or less than 3% ha have what is legally required? No, the, the numbers are quite shocking because we're talking about in Kenya alone, we have over 54 million people, but only 3% of that, or less than 3% has any form of insurance. Even though it is required? Yes, this is beyond <laughs> mobility. <laughs> And this is this is actually beyond mobility, right? So we're looking at health, you're looking at life, you're looking at education, like zero uptake, or almost zero uptake because okay. two point something percent so, doesn't make sense. So, so based on based on your on your research, why is the uptake so low? Is is it a matter of culture? Is it a matter of not being able to pay for it? Is it a matter of the product that's available being hard to get to, hard to buy? Is it a matter of the product that, that's available being unaffordable for the average person? Is it a lack of awareness? Like, like this is like, like kind of like pulling ideas. Yeah. What, what could it be? So what have you guys found right. that, that leads to this low uptake? So I'll, I'll, there, there's so many challenges in the industry, but I'll start with the three that bottom up to the top. So we're looking at affordability is a big issue. 
because of how products are configured usually they are yearly products that are too super expensive you know uh, you look at access to the actual insurance right so even for some of us who are a bit more you know tech savvy it's still hard for me to get an education policy of the comfort of my home right so it's an access issue it's an affordability issue and then even when you get to the products right the coverage in terms of what you'd want to see in a product is not you know doesn't relate with the common you know user of the product so it's a couple you know it's a myriad of challenges but those are the top three as far as we are concerned based on our research and that was a, that is what has led to you know low insurance penetration or adoption within the african space okay and we we we, we are trying to solve that as well so so how is is it, how is multisure solving the or starting to solve this problem so there are a couple of things we've done off of you know the customers so for example in terms of affordability we've been able to slice payments to a per day sort of product for drivers and riders within the african space we're doing uh, a per trip cover as well so you just get a you know from one point to the other you just get a micro product and you are essentially covered in terms of access we've you know we've done we've done two two things right one is we've created a whole agency network around users of either moto moto taxis right these are two wheelers all drivers right so we use aggregators and then get in touch with them and then help distribute that particular product and then we've also built a whole you know omni channel approach on the chatbot side when it comes to the technology side and I'll maybe I'll delve into that a bit more later and then in terms of the products we've built our the initial product we had we built it from the customer backwards so we got them to list the benefits they wanted to see subjected it to a vote and then the ones that you know were the highest you know in terms of the needs of the customers is what we went to the underwriter with and asked them could you please help curate this particular product and 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 80% of them say no right so so it's a weird hybrid personal accident cover that you know that spans life medical you know um general insurance all that kind of thing and we had to get an underwriter in the UK or a broker in the UK to try and get us that particular product and that's how we ended up with that particular product and what we've seen in the marketplace is that you know we have an 80% adoption rate for every customer we've talked to in terms of our products because it resonates with them it was created by them and it seems to work for them okay so so hold on hold on i don't do math well <laughs> okay you're, okay you're, you're a computer <laughs> science major so so you had to get through a yeah. lot of math in school I yep. attempted computer science and it turns out if you can't do math, computer science is not in your future. Um, yeah. And, 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 so, but my math is good enough to realize that if adoption in the country is 3% and 80% yep. of the people you're getting in front of are buying, yep. you're like, this is magnitudes, uh, you know, levels uh, to the nth power you're being more effective in reaching people exactly. by designing from from fr from the customer out and 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 building right. solutions that, that actually work for them that is exactly. amazing and and you've been doing this according to linkedin uh, the current company for a year and a half and then the prior company which was not insurance for for about four years um yep amazing so after a year and a half how many uh, customers uh do, do you guys serve how, how, how many how many policies are are out there uh for 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 multi -sure? so um so let me start off with the we covered 20 different towns geographic i mean geographically distributed within the country and out of the 20 those 20 towns we got to engage 15,000 riders right this is a motor taxi which is the most common form of transport within africa okay. mm -hmm. and out of the 15,000 we actually onboarded 12,000 immediately right um and then based on our capacity because you're a bootstrap company we couldn't handle more than the 15,000 hence the number and what we've noticed is that there's a spiral effect right like there's a 
they're just something that like clicks with most of our users in terms of the product positioning, the way we've approached it. We did a lot of customer education, which was hard to do and very expensive. Mm -hmm. But what we noticed with that is that when we started with the customer education first, we ended up having a higher retention rate of the customer, right? For most guys, they just, you know, create products and then throw it out there through social media and hope people will buy, right? So we've done it a bit different in terms of the approach. And that has led us to, you know, like we have 12,000 actively paying customers day on day. And these are micro payments. So you're looking at 10 cents, you know, to the dollar per day. And that's a product that they essentially get, which is like, uh, three thousand five, three thousand five hundred dollars worth of value, right? Combined value. Okay, so thirty five so hundred is, is the the limit. That yes, that's the limit. Would pay if exactly. you had an accident. Yeah. For ten yeah. cents, we, for ten cents, we get you thirty five hundred dollars for the day. And yes. You can activate it today, not activate it tomorrow. Basically, activate it just on days that you're gonna drive. Exactly. I'm guessing straight from your phone. Yes, yes, yes. So there's a lot of things there. So essentially. The way we built it is that we built a, a WhatsApp chatbot, and I'll send you a link. You can play around with it. And users come in through the WhatsApp chatbot at the first point of touch, right? Because everyone has, you know, everyone in, in Kenya, we're a bit, you know, we leapfrog, you know, technology. So almost everyone of my right does has a WhatsApp access, whether it's on his phone or through someone else's, mm -hmm. and they onboard themselves, right? So what usually happens is that there's mobile money payment, the infrastructure of mobile money, that's M-Pesa. So essentially from your, from your phone, you can actually make an actual payment directly to a merchant code that is tied to our business and you actually get a cover immediately on the phone, on the fly, right? So that has been super helpful to make it super easy for our users to, you know, like do it and they go to their home any time of the day, it doesn't matter, right? Make a claim mm -hmm. whenever they want and very easy to, you know, use as well. Okay, so so it sounds to me like you've got amazing product, amazing service, and, and amazing product market fit. The, 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 the yeah. customer, when you get in front of them, a ridiculous percentage of them wants to buy, right? Yeah. So the limiting factor that's keeping you from ensuring... 54 million people, uh, you know, so for, from ensuring God knows how, how many millions of, of, of drivers in Kenya, yeah. uh, that it sounds like, like it, it's a matter of capacity. It's, it's a matter of, of capital to back up the, the, uh, those claims. Uh, exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah. And by, by the way, I, I don't know if you yet have a whole year of, of, of data, but what kind of loss ratio are, 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 are you producing? So the actual numbers are around 20%, but we're looking to push that to, we are, we are looking to flip that, right? So one of the core models for more tissue is to pay as many claims as we can, right? Mm -hmm. So that then we can bring in on as many people as we can, and then we can upsell them X number of products, right? Because one of the biggest challenges out here in Africa is every time you mention, like we noticed that in our behavioral research that we did a couple of you know months ago, every time we mentioned insurance to our users, they immediately walked out or walked away. So uh -huh. the lingo, you know, the lingo is not, you know, we our lingo is you know more on the cover side, and there's something we are playing around with as we speak in terms of you know more on the social construct of what their traditional coping mechanisms were. And then, you know, talking about something like that looks like a warranty of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. That's the closest thing I can use for guys, in, you know, guys to understand. But it's like, we are really trying to change even the narrative of how we communicate the insurance, you know, cover itself to the end users. Because traditionally, most underwriters do not pay claims, right? There's always a fine print somewhere that says, you know, hey, um, you didn't shave your beard so you couldn't see properly or whatever it is, you know. Um, and what we've noticed is that if we pay more people, especially on the micro space, right, these are small ticket sizes of $25, $35, not so high amounts. The more you pay people, the more they, they pay for the premium upfront. Like I've, we've noticed that from the data where we have customers we paid for like a medical expenses, you know, component or benefit. 
and they immediately paid for the whole year. Right? That tells you something. And these are gay, like actually like over 60% of my users have never had any contact with any form of insurance. So that tells you a lot, right? Like people are yeah. craving for these products, but they cannot get them the way they want and they don't work for them the way they would want for them to buy extra products from the insurance companies. What 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 other products are you currently offering? What other products are you preparing to offer in the future? So um, I think the push on our side is more on the technology side. So we're trying to play around with smart contracts, you know, uh, all these buzzwords. I don't want to use them right now because I'm a tech as well. Uh, it's just trying to figure out how can we really change how insurance is done within the African context and then model it around behavior. That's very important for us, right? So we're looking at like what you start noticing quickly is once you pick a claim within a certain region and the word spreads out, they come back to you and ask you, can you give me, can you extend some medical product for my wife or my kids or, you know, whatever it is. And then later on, when people start over interacting with the product, they start asking you for, oh, I, I want to take care of my kids in case something happens to me. Is there something that we can do on the education side? Right? They don't know it's an education policy they're asking for. It's, they're just trying to protect, you know, um, their families or their extended they're, families. They're, they're basically reinventing insurance the, the exact same way that it was invented in the developed world long ago, uh, except that they're, they're doing it uh, in, in a lower cost way because yep. of the technology we have. Exactly. Uh, but it, it is kind of amazing to watch uh, or yeah. in, my, in my case to, yeah. to listen to it. Uh, it really is because I'm a giant insurance nerd and, and, and I've read a lot about the history of insurance in the US, the history of insurance in the UK, uh, the right. history of many insurance companies. And very often it starts this way. Very often it's, it's a few people who, who know yeah. each other, who have the same risk protecting each other. Uh, and, and, and then over time, it, it, uh, as it gains uh, penetration in the population, it, 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 you don't know everybody as well as you used to. And, 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 it became, it, and you start getting bad actors. Uh, you start yep. getting fraud and, and you start getting the, those, yep. those, those problems. And, and, and then you have to start bulking up your claims and, and, and things slow down. And, and, and eventually, the, right, two genera three generations down, the client no longer loves you. Uh, the client is complaining ab ab about, about, about insurance being mandatory and never, and, and like never getting their money's worth. Uh, so it's so interesting to, 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 to see it happening from the ground up, but, but leapfrog the technology. Um, exactly. What, what kind, so we, we do have a lot of listeners that, that are either venture capital firms or angel investors. Uh, what kind of investments uh, are, are you looking for to, to, to be able to scale this thing to, to, to the rest of, of the Kenyan market? I mean, uh, we just started our fundraising round and um, for what we want to build out, right? We are looking at at least $1.3 million and that should essentially get us to, you know, 300,000 active riders and over a million commuters covered, right? Um, there's a lot we want to do on the product development side, right? In terms of like the smart contracts, the, the omni-channel approach, a lot more on the data side. Um, and that, you know, that also like costs quite a bit, right? Um, and, and also grow the team. We've, we've bootstrapped as a team of five so far. And, you know, like um, we want to grow that to at least 15 people and, you know, keep on like building on, whatever it is we've learned. And, and just to mention, like, there are a couple of things that we've seen even in the business in terms of verticals that are real game changer. Um, so for example, uh, a month ago, we rolled out a fuel card. So essentially the, the fuel card works is for all our riders or drivers, we generate for them a fuel card and then give them. So what, what essentially happens is they get a discount for every liter of fuel they consume. And that discount is used for what you're calling insurance points that then can be redeemed to buy different products, okay? Now, uh, behind the scenes, I mean, like if I'm to talk, you know, big picture, it's essentially figuring out micro, the infrastructure or the rails for micro payments and crazy customer retention, right? So, so everyone, like all, all our riders, 
they have 12 touch points in a day, for example, but the only, well, the only one you can automatically essentially like plug in and embed the product in is only the fuel because they are largely informal, right? So what you've noticed is that for every rider we've given a fuel card to, they've paid for a whole month worth of fuel every single day. These are three to five liters worth of fuel every single day. And then they've started like even increasing the way they consume fuel so they can get more insurance points and then they can redeem for other things. So we're starting to like play around with some of these concepts around uh, because one of the biggest challenges in Africa is figuring out micropayments, right? So Africa, the structure is, there's Kenya on this other side. We have mobile money. Everyone has mobile money in the country. But then you go to a place like, you know, Morocco, for example, the mobile money penetration might not be the same as the Kenyan one, right? Yeah, so it's, it's trying to figure out how do you then not disrupt people in terms of their behavior and what they do every single day, but then you model products around their normal way of life, right? And then use traditional coping mechanisms to, to again, like for us, our smart contracts play, which is something I was actually just debugging a couple of minutes ago. Um, uh, we're trying to figure out how do they, in terms of like for a claim, when a claim happens, it has like three layers to it, right? So there you think about like the blockchain where, you know, Tony has to sort of like approve, I have to approve and someone else has to approve. That's sort of like the context in terms of what you're trying to achieve on the smart contract side, which is still pretty much um, based off of the social construct we had in, in or we have in Africa, where we do fundraising, right? For an event, like for example, if someone gets into an accident, then you know, we'll come together, contribute some money. Now we have weird scenarios in my space where for my riders, what they do in case of an accident is that they hold a rope across the road and no motorist can pass without contributing towards the kitty. <laughs> that That's their coping mechanism, that, right? That so, is the most creative thing I have heard in all of insurance in 12 and a half years. Yeah, uh, that's what... Yeah. it's crazy it's crazy out here and then you know you you sit there and you watch that and you be part of the process because you're trying to get in, you know to understand the people and you also help them hold the rope as you're trying to you know and figure out why why like why do you have to do this right and then you know you start realizing when you start talking to these particular individuals that that's the last result right that's their coping mechanism that's all they can do to get you know to you know, to the end in terms of like medical expenses. And then you talk to them about, we do not sell insurance at that point. We just try and understand why. And then ask them like, you know, what if you had, you know, like you start juxtaposing some of these things and say, okay, supposing I give you an option in terms of this, how would that look like for you, you know? And 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 why we have a huge conversion rate for, it's because of how we approach this particular product with the customer themselves. I, 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 I am, I'm speechless. This is so, so very interesting. I've done three or four episodes with, with, with other Africans or about Africa. And by far the most interesting one we've, we've done thus far, you've given me a lot of, of insight into uh, the, the, the African uh, insurance uh, market. Thank, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I look forward to see you guys continue to grow. Uh, when this goes live, uh, I will tag both you and the, and the company on LinkedIn investors okay. oh my god come on 1.3 million bucks uh, f- uh to to get a foothold in a market of 54 million drivers and by the way there's there's no re- there's probably other markets that are similar to kenya right india uh and uh, there's probably other large african countries that that, uh, that or even asian countries or even latin american countries that have similar challenges if if, if Joel can perfect the, this, this model, uh, there's no reason for it not to be able to be expanded to Vietnam or, or Cambodia or, or, or Thailand or other large uh, groups of population that, that, that are uh, significantly underserved. This is an amazing opportunity, not only to make a difference in the developing world, but also to do very well while, while doing that. Uh, 
and all it takes is 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 having the guts to to invest a little bit of your portfolio uh, outside of your comfort zone. Uh, so glad that, 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 that we that we that we got the chat. Really, uh, thank you so much for your time today. And by, and by the way, I, I I should say it. It's five thirty p.m. Eastern time. If I if I'm not mistaken, it's it's about twelve thirty uh, about thirty minutes past midnight for you. Uh, so, yep. so I, I really appreciate, I appreciate you staying up to have a conversation with me. Uh, and and uh, for, for other in, uh, uh, in developing world, the insure techs working with the insurance elephant, uh, we, we, uh, I recently met with them and, and they uh, shared the feedback. I think it was yesterday. They shared the feedback that, that it is hard uh, for, for insure techs on the other side of the world to, to uh, to to chat with 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 me come on the podcast during my usual recording hours which are 4 to 6 p.m eastern time so so basically i have created a new and i'm sorry that you didn't get to benefit from this but next time i have created a new scheduling link that exclusively for for insurance that are working with the insurance elephant that allows uh, a little bit of morning hours in, in my eastern time and a little bit of saturday hours uh, and sunday hours so so basically uh, trying to make it easier for 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 the, the rest of the, of, of the developing world founders uh, to to be able to come to come on the show without staying up till super late. Uh, so so thank you so so much for your time. Thanks so much, Tony. Uh, really, really, you know, glad to have a chance a chance to basically just you know talk about more issue and what you're trying to build, and look forward to you know connecting and learning more. Uh, like I've listened to a lot of your podcasts from some other places. Pretty awesome stuff. Awesome. So, it, thank it, you. It, it's my pleasure. Thank you.